guys, welcome back to the Off Grid Garage. It is a late night show again. What? You you don't believe me, right? It is dark. I'm not making this up here. Yeah. 9.30 in the PM, late night show, just for you. And today with an Off Grid Garage shorts. Well, I have started yesterday already with a test with a QSO battery here to test the um, current limiter in the Tabaluga and the Chang Chambang in the QSO battery BMS. I have also fully discharged the uh, Seplos 135 ampere hour battery and the 280 ampere hour battery because I want to see if the 10 amp balancers work in these two batteries as well. As a reminder, we have the Seplos BMS, the um, 48100. Oh, it is the 48100 10C in here with CAN function. And in the big battery, we have got the brand new 48150 10E with Bluetooth. So two different generations of BMS, and I want to test the current limiter in both of them. Because we know these batteries are actually limiting the current when the battery gets full. But do they also limit the current if an over voltage, if an over current alarm or over current protection occurs? This is the uh, quick test tonight. Okay, I have now connected the 135 ampere hour battery and this one is on uh, 50.9 volts. And I have also connected our QSO battery, which is, um, well, 50% state of charge, 0% uh, state of charge, almost. And I've changed the settings to charging over current warning, 40 amps, over current protection, 60 amps, current limit switch, it is off at the moment. I wanna see if this one kicks in, actually. Once we turn on the QSO battery, which we wanna do right now. And let's see. Seventeen, twenty-four, thirty-one. It's not kicking in when the alarm comes. Ah, oh, there's not enough current. Or oh, is it kicking in now? I think it is. It is kicking in. Nice. Ten amps. So here in the software we should see. Yep, there's the current limiting switch. Ten amps and the charging MOSFETs have turned off. So this is actually the same behavior as the QSO, the Tabaluga BMS does, which you will see in a second. It turns off the charging MOSFETs, but still the current limiter allows 10 amps. And as we have just seen, I think it kicked in at the over voltage alarm already. Yeah, there, the warning, 40 amps. And then there's always one, two, three seconds or something delay. Then the limiter kicks in. So that is good to know. Even in the old 10C BMS with CAN functionality, the current limiter kicks in as well if there's an over current alarm. Okay, let's turn off the QSO battery again. This goes to zero. And we want to do the same with the larger Seplos with 280 ampere hour. Our good old battery number one. Yeah, quick and dirty connection. All right, now the big battery is connected and we turn on the QSO battery. Oh, we need to check the settings first because I think this one sits like 150 amps or something. We will never reach that. So we've got an, a warning at 25 amps and a disconnect at 55. So we can actually see if it triggers at 25 or at 55 only. Okay, I just tested the Seplos battery again. This time we are feeding it from the Jackie battery and we can clearly see the current limiter kicks in when we reach the warning already, not the actual protection threshold. Okay, let's turn on the circuit breaker here. And we can see there 52 and then it goes down to 10. There we go. See, we didn't even reach the 55 amps of overcurrent protection. So already the alarm triggers the current limiter to turn on in the Seplos batteries. Okay, I'm currently connected to the Jiang Jiang Bang Da, the, the Tabaluga BMS, which is in the QSO battery. Um, I cannot see any settings for the current limiter here. Current limiter disable. So that's the only light I can find. And it looks like it is enabled at the moment because this one is not green. 
I have now set the charging over current 1 to 40 amps and the charging over current 2 to 45 amps. Uh, let's see if it triggers. And also in the alarm tab I have set the charge over current start alarm at 30 amps. So 30 amps alarm, 40 amps disconnect. And we have fully discharged the battery. We are at 50 volts. It has recharged a bit this morning from solar already. And we are going to uh, use the Jackie battery, which is um, at 50% state of charge or so. Let's see how much current actually goes in here. 15, 36, 20. There it is. There's the limiter, 20 amps. Perfect. So this works as well in the QSO battery with the Tabaluga BMS. Current limiter, 20 amps. So I've, I've just seen, um, while it is limiting the, um, the charging to 20 amps, it shows actually in the software that we have an O over current protection and the charging CMOS has actually turned off, but it is still charging with 20 amps. So here with this BMS, you can see this directly again. On this side, the, here are the MOSFETs for charging and discharging under this heatsink. You can see them. And when the BMS goes into current limiting, it turns off the charging MOSFETs, so no power comes in through these MOSFETs anymore. But on the other side, we have this current limiting board here with its own MOSFETs. And this is exactly why we have another positive. This goes to the main positive of the battery and supplies power to not only to the BMS, but also to this current limiter. And this is the cable where the 10 or 20 amps go through when the charge MOSFETs actually turn off. And you can see here under this heatsink, there are more MOSFETs and even the BMS has turned off the charging MOSFETs. The MOSFETs in the current limiter are still active and letting power through to the battery, but on a limited base. And there you go. This was the QSO battery with the Tabaluga BMS from last night. So as we can see here, all these BMSs are using the current limiter if there's either an overcurrent warning or an overcurrent protection. But only the Seplos BMS is using the current limiter as well when the battery is fully charged to slow down charging. If the battery is connected to the Victron system, you can also see the CCL, the charge current limit in the Victron system goes down from whatever it was before to 10 amps only. So it requests actually these 10 amps from your inverter or from your solar charge controller. And at this stage, I'm not 100% sure if it also limits the current actively itself or if it only requests this from the charger. And then it's up to the charger or your inverter to deliver these 10 amps. But is the BMS, but is the Zeppelin BMS actually active limiting the charging current? Yeah, if you know anything about this, please leave your comments down below. But I will also fully charge now the Zeppelin battery here and uh, do some more testing with this current limiter and find out if it is limiting the charging current itself or if it is just requesting this from the charger. Well, anyway, I shall give you this result in one of the next videos. Okay, guys, so far this quick and short short video from tonight and i have prepared the bms now for our frankenstein battery here a lot of people want me to put the knee active balancer on this battery but i actually don't want to do it okay maybe maybe i should install the knee active balancer in the frankenstein battery right okay hopefully tomorrow night we will start with the installation because tomorrow night Ah, you can't see it. Tomorrow night we have full moon. And this is the perfect time to install the BMS on the Frankenstein battery and bring it to life for the very first time. It'll be the night of all nights. All right, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks to all these very nice and kind and of course beautiful people out there who have donated to the channel. And until tomorrow night, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Tomorrow night, full moon. I'll show you. <laughs>
Yeah, and we will see us again tomorrow night.